Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Ledger Nano X cryptocurrency hardware wallet out of the box. So let's get started. All right, so it's been a while since I've done a Ledger Nano X setup video, uh, all the way from opening the box to getting your cryptocurrency stored on there. And things have changed a little bit with the Ledger Live interface. So I wanted to do an updated video for everyone out there that wants to store their cryptocurrency safely and securely on a Ledger Nano X hardware device. So let's go ahead and unbox this. All right, so this is the Ledger Nano X here. You're gonna get a cable, comes with some recovery sheets. Recovery sheet is very important. When you initialize this device, it's going to generate a random master private key, and then it's going to give you the backup phrase for that. So we're gonna need to write this down. This phrase can be used to restore the device. All right, so I'm gonna go through the setup of the device so we can get this recovery phrase written down. Now that we've got this guy out of the box, uh, in order to get started, we're just gonna connect it to our computer with a USB cable. There's one that comes in the box, but you can use any standard USB-C connector to connect this device. I'm using a bit of a longer cable here myself. I'll go ahead and connect my device. Now, uh, since this is a first time setup, you can watch the device and it'll explain sort of what to do but it's also uh, a little easier for a newcomer if you open up and install Ledger Live uh, because Ledger Live will walk you through the entire process. So in order to do that, let's go over to the Apps and Services menu and choose Ledger Live. Let's go ahead and get our Ledger Live software downloaded. I'm going to choose uh, the Windows version. All right, and I can just drop this in my downloads folder. All right, and when we're done, we'll just double click that. Let's go ahead and get Ledger Live installed. I'll just allow it to install in the default location. All right, and there we go. We can go ahead and uh, click finish and just leave this ticked. It'll go ahead and launch Ledger Live for us. I like to get rid of this shortcut. And then I can just pin to my taskbar if I need to get to it later. We'll go ahead and get started. We'll uh, tick these off and get moving. Now I have a Ledger Nano X, so I'm gonna choose the Ledger Nano X option. This doesn't really affect Ledger Live much. It just makes the instructions more device specific. So if you have a Ledger Nano S, you can use this. I'll hit Ledger Nano X. All right, now this is going to be our first time with our device. So let's go ahead and choose set up a new Ledger Nano X. All right, there's a few little lessons here about what it means to store your own cryptocurrency using your own personal private key. This device here holds the private keys. The Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are stored on their respective blockchains. This device simply is the keychain that controls all of the wallets. All right, so uh, let's get going here. You're gonna wanna put aside a little time to do this. Now you'll need a pen to write down your 24 word recovery phrase, and you'll need your recovery phrase sheet as well. You don't have to use this. You can use a regular piece of paper if you want something that's a little bigger and easier for you to see. It doesn't really matter where you write it down, just make sure you write it down and store it in a place that you won't forget, right? someplace that you can easily find if you need it again. It's also a good idea to have multiple copies of your recovery phrase stored in different locations so you have uh, a more robust backup for your uh, recovery phrase. All right, I'll go ahead and hit OK. And it uh, wants us to follow the instructions. Just stick with me. I'll walk you through every step of the way here. All right, this is what we're going to see on our device. It has a Welcome to Ledger Nano X and it wants us to press the right button. You see that little arrow there? Indicates that there are additional menu items to the right of this, right? All right, so we can navigate using these buttons. You've got a button over here, you've got a button over here. Uh, most of the time we'll be hitting this uh, right button, which I'll refer to as the metal button, right? So we'll start off by hitting that metal button, move over there, and it's just gonna give you some instructions to, to welcome you 
to the navigation of this device, right? And then if you want to validate a selection, you'll hit both buttons at the same time. Uh, we can also hold both buttons down for a few seconds to get into the control center, which I'll show you how to do in a bit. All right, so let's just navigate all the way over. All right, we're going to set this up as a new device. Now we want to activate this command, right? So we're not going to hit the single button, right? When we're on top of the command, we'll hit both buttons to indicate that we wish to execute this command. So let's hit both buttons, and there we go. We're ready to go. All right, we've all done that. Come back here to follow the instructions for the pin code so we can hit the next, right? We're going to choose our own pin code. And we can choose four to eight digits. I'm going to choose an eight digit, uh, but you don't have to uh, go all the way to eight digits. All right, so here we are on the pin code instructions. Let's just go back to my uh, setup screen, all right? So uh, we'll hit both buttons to activate this, all right? And then we'll start by, by entering a number. We can scroll up and down using the different buttons, all right? All right, now after we've entered four digits, you'll see that little check mark. That means that you can hit both buttons to OK this pin. So if you only want four digits, you can stop here and hit both buttons. I'll go ahead and enter additional digits. All right, and then when you get to that last digit, you'll hit both buttons and it wants you to confirm the code. So you'll simply enter the same pin you just entered. All right, and if you manage to enter the same code exactly the same twice, when you hit both buttons, it should confirm, right? If you made a mistake and you entered two different pins, you'll have to start over again. Now it's time to write down our recovery phrase. So let's go back over here. Uh, let's go ahead and move to the next step. And it explains a little bit about what a recovery phrase is. Uh, the recovery phrase is a human readable format of the master private key that gets created when you initialize this device. A lot of people worry that maybe Ledger is putting these on their devices and they'll steal all our crypto someday. That is not the case. This device is certified by third party organizations. It has also been uh, endlessly tested and hacked by white hat hackers for any vulnerabilities. This device generates a random private key every time you initialize it, right? And it's from a pool of uh, billions of possible private keys. So when you initialize the device, rest assured that you are creating a random private key of your own, right? And this random private key has a backup phrase which you can write down on paper in case the device gets lost or stolen or destroyed. Right? And you can use that phrase to restore your device and gain access to all of the wallets that you created. It's a wonderful thing. Math is beautiful. All right? But these 24 words uh, can also be used by someone else to access your wallet. So please don't let anyone else see these words. All right? Once we understand this, uh, we'll click here and uh, move on. All right, it wants us to uh, pull out the sheet and start writing down words. All right, so uh, we'll hit both buttons to continue here. And then it's going to give us some more verbiage about uh, these words. There's my first word. So uh, I'll just start writing it down on my sheet. All right, and after you write the first word, you'll just uh, hit this metal button to continue over to the next word. And just continue down the road. Note also that the words in the list are numbered here on the device, and so you want to make sure that you write the word in the right slot, right? Because the order of these words is important. Now you'll notice there that I uh, went too far. I can just uh, use the other button to go back. Just make sure you're writing the same word number in the right slot. All right, and there we go. I've written all my words down, and you want to make sure that it's legible so that you can read it. So when we get to the end, uh, we can go back and check our words against the list, and, or we can get all the way to the end here and hit both buttons. All right, now they want us to confirm. So this is the tedious and tricky part. It takes a little bit of concentration. You need to make sure that you confirm your phrase. 
All right, let's go ahead and advance to the next step here. And they want us to confirm. We're going to have to scroll through the words until you find word number one and then uh, repeat it for all 24 words. So it's a little bit tedious, but it's it can be done. So we'll hit both buttons here. All right, so we'll just look for that first word. And there it went. And, and when we find the first word, number one, we'll hit both buttons. And then we'll look for number two. There it went. We'll hit both buttons again. And just on down the line till we get all of these words in. All right, and when you get to that last word and hit both buttons, it'll show you that it's processing. All right, and then when you get that last word in, you'll see this little message telling you that your device is ready. So uh, from here, we can just use this metal button to scroll over to the dashboard, all right? And then once we're on top of that, we'll hit both buttons. And that's gonna take us to the home screen of the device. All right, once we've done that, we'll hit uh, this here. Now it's telling us to hide the recovery phrase, right? The recovery phrase will allow you to restore all of the wallets. So if you uh, store Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and all kinds of stuff on this device, and then you allow this 24 word recovery phrase to be seen by someone else, or you give it to someone over the phone or in a, uh, a chat window or anything like that, they'll have access to all of your cryptocurrency. So please, please, please do not show this to anybody else. Never give it to tech support or anybody claiming to be tech support. No one from tech support would ever ask you for your phrase. All right, and then we can hit OK, I'm done. And now they have a quiz they want us to take. Not too hard. All right, let's go to our next step. It's going to run the genuine check on our device. So uh, we'll just choose Check My Nano. It's going to scan the device for you. And you'll see this uh, message on your device saying Allow Ledger Manager. So you'll want to hit both buttons to allow that. All right, and there we go. Uh, now this is a cryptographic dance that is done from your device to the Ledger servers. Uh, each device has its own unique signature that uh, allows Ledger to make sure that it is a genuine device. This has nothing to do with your private key. They are not checking your private key. Uh, your private key is not being provided to them in any way or form. This is simply a cryptographic genuine check. All right, and once you've done that, then uh, you know that you have a genuine device and that your private key was random. And there we go. We'll hit uh, all good, continue. All right, notice here that it says that you must have the app for the crypto asset installed on your device before you install, before you add the account. So you'll definitely want to go over to the manager to install apps. All right, and uh, if you have an older device that was in the box maybe or in their warehouse and does not have the latest version of the firmware on there, let's go ahead and update that firmware. Just hit that button, read through these instructions, uh, make sure you have that uh, recovery code written down. We'll hit continue here. Now you should advance this button here until we see that identifier, just make sure it matches. All right, when you're satisfied there, just hit perform update, we hit both buttons. And we'll enter the pin code, the one that we, uh, our own pin code that we set up. So go ahead and enter the pin code. All right, once we enter that pin code, you'll see some uh, action happening on your device. It's gonna be in update mode and processing Get through that firmware update. All right, and then at the end, you'll have to re-enter your pin again. Don't get freaked out. It's part of the process, right? Just enter the pin again. All right, and then here we are back at the home screen. We'll uh, just go ahead and click Install Apps. And we're ready to install the apps. All right, we'll have to allow Ledger Manager once again. We'll click both buttons there. 
All right, you'll uh, notice you can install multiple apps there. I just went ahead and installed the top five cryptos. Uh, you can install uh, however many apps you want to manage on this device. Now, notice I'm installing Cardano, Binance Smart Chain, and Solana. Uh, those are not supported in Ledger Live. So you won't be able to use Ledger Live to manage those cryptocurrencies. I have some great videos. I'll put a link to those up in the corner there uh, to show you how to manage your uh, Ledger device when you're using uh, cryptos like Cardano and Solana, right? So you'll want to check out those videos. Today, I'm just showing you the basics on how you uh, store uh, cryptos on the Ledger that are supported in Ledger Live. And remember, we're not really storing them on the ledger. We're storing them in the wallets that the ledger device holds the private keys for. I know it's a little confusing, but I try to keep my terminology accurate as possible. All right, now that we've got those done, we can go over to manage my accounts and start adding accounts, right? So the first account it offers is Bitcoin. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start with Bitcoin. We'll hit continue. And it wants us to open the Bitcoin app. We'll hit both buttons. So I like to edit the name of the account. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it My Bitcoin, uh, Bob's Bitcoin, or just Bitcoin. I'll hit Add Account. And then I'm done with that. Now let's go over and go ahead and add an Ethereum account. Let's hit Add Account. And this time we'll choose Ethereum. We'll hit Continue. All right, and the device will leave the Bitcoin app and then indicate you need to open the Ethereum app. So we'll hit both buttons in order to do that. And we'll allow the device to go ahead and create an Ethereum wallet for us. All right, there it is. It's uh, found an empty Ethereum account. We'll hit add account here. And then we're done. All right, so notice now that in our list we have uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. All right, and if you click right on the account, you'll get to the wallet interface and it's ready to receive some Bitcoin. So that'll be our next step. All right, now that we have our device all set up, we're ready to put a little cryptocurrency in here. Uh, there are a couple little things I'd like to show you about Ledger Live real quick and the Ledger device. The first thing is there's an auto lock on uh, your device, which causes it to go to sleep after 10 minutes. I don't like that. I uh, tend, I would rather it stay on until I'm finished. So uh, let's go into the control panel by holding down both buttons for a couple of seconds. And then from here, uh, we can uh, access these control features. There's our battery readout. We can lock the device directly from here if we want to. Uh, we can also check the Bluetooth name of the device uh, now we're in the settings, and this is where I'd like to uh, show you how to turn off auto lock, right? So uh, let's hit both buttons to get into settings. Let's scroll over one till we get to security. We'll hit both buttons to enter that. Uh, we could change our pin. We can set a passphrase. We're going to go to auto lock right now. Let's hit both buttons. Notice that auto lock is defaulted at 10 minutes. Uh, let's change that behavior. Let's hit no auto lock. And then when we're done with that, we'll just navigate down to the word back. We'll hit both buttons. And then we'll navigate again over to another word that says back. We'll hit both buttons. And then we're back out at the top level of the ledger device. Uh, now that is a security feature, right? If you walk away from your computer and you have this thing connected, it'll still be accessible to anybody that happens to walk up. Right? So if you're going to turn off auto lock, make sure that you always disconnect the device when you're done using it. All right? But I, I tend to work on my device quite a bit and I don't like it going to sleep every 10 minutes. All right? Another thing we can check is our Ledger Live settings. If we go to the uh, settings in Ledger Live, uh, we can go down to uh, theme and change the theme, the look and feel of Ledger Live. I like the dusk theme. Right. In order to uh, enable password lock, you'll just toggle this. It's going to ask you to enter a password twice. Right Now, this password is for your convenience. 
Notice that Ledger Live will auto lock after 10 minutes. It will also do the same thing that the device does. After 10 minutes, it'll go into sleep mode and you'll have to re-enter your password. I personally don't like that behavior, so I hit never. You could also hit one hour, that gives you time. Uh, and then if you walk away from your computer, Ledger Live will uh, require a password to wake up again. But uh, I like never. Right? Now this doesn't turn off the password behavior completely, so if I close Ledger Live and open it again, it's going to ask me for a password in order to get into Ledger Live. And this is why I like to have that passphrase uh, enabled. All right, so those are the basic features of Ledger Live that you should be aware of. Let's put some crypto into this wallet, right? So I'm gonna show you the easiest use case, which is purchasing a little Bitcoin, Ethereum, over on an exchange and then transferring it into the wallet. There are some additional features here in Ledger Live that I'll show you in a bit that allow you to do this directly within Ledger Live. Uh, but a lot of people already have uh, a Coinbase account and they wanna know how to move their crypto onto a wallet. So I'm just gonna do that use case. It's the, as far as I'm concerned, it's the most simple of all. So let's go over to our Coinbase account I'm at the home page of my Coinbase account. I'm going to buy a little Bitcoin, a little bit of Ethereum, and then I'm also going to buy a little Chainlink, which is an ERC20 token, so that I can demonstrate how to manage ERC20 tokens in your ledger-based Ethereum wallet. All right, so we'll do a crash course here. All right, so the first thing we'll do is buy a little Bitcoin. Uh, it's the default there. I've got my bank account set up. When you get your Coinbase account set up, it'll you can link it to your bank account. We'll buy $50 worth of Bitcoin. All right, we'll hit buy now. Notice there was a little merchant charge on that. After we've done that, we'll hit continue. We can see that we've got some Bitcoin in our Bitcoin portfolio, right? We can access the portfolios over here on the left. All right, it'll show you all of your assets in one window. We've done that. Let's go ahead and buy some Ethereum. We'll hit buy sell again. And this time, instead of Bitcoin, we'll just click and choose Ethereum instead. I'll buy $50 worth of Ethereum. We'll hit buy now. All right, and then we'll hit continue there and view transaction. And that takes us into the Ethereum portfolio. And you can see there that I have some Ethereum in my portfolio. Let's go back over to home. Let's go back up to buy sell. And this time, instead of Bitcoin, we'll choose Chainlink. Now, Chainlink is one of the uh, top uh, ERC-20 tokens by market cap. And the reason I'm buying the Chainlink is that it is an ERC-20 token. It is a Ethereum-based token. So I'm going to show you how to manage those over in Ledger Live. We'll uh, choose another $50 worth of Chainlink here. Uh, there's that same merchant charge. We'll hit Buy Now. All right, and then we're done there. We'll hit continue, view transaction. That takes us into our chain link portfolio and uh, we're ready to go. So if we go back over to the portfolio, you can see that I've got three different cryptocurrencies that are in my Coinbase account, right? So I'm going to show you how to move that cryptocurrency into your ledger-based wallet so you can store it safely and securely and you have total control over that cryptocurrency. All right, so we'll go back over here to Ledger Live. Uh, let's click on the Bitcoin account. All right, so uh, let's start off with Bitcoin. Let's hit Receive, and we'll hit Continue. And your device will indicate that it needs you to open the Bitcoin app. We'll hit uh, both buttons to do that. All right, and there's that Bitcoin address. That is the address of my wallet. And you can see that it's on the device and it's on the screen. So I'm going to use this to send some Bitcoin from Coinbase. So I'll copy that address into my clipboard. I'll go ahead and eyeball these two addresses, make sure they match. I'll go over here to approve and hit both buttons. All right. Now I'm done with the device, right? I've got the address in my clipboard. Uh, I don't need the device anymore. I can even disconnect it if I want to. A lot of people ask me about that. They say, do I need to leave the device connected when I'm sending Bitcoin to my wallet? And the answer is no, you don't. Uh, as long as you have the address, that's all you really need because we're just moving Bitcoin from one address on the blockchain to another, an address that you control. All right, so let's go back over to Coinbase. 
let's go into our Bitcoin portfolio. We'll do send all. And then I'll paste in the address of my ledger-based wallet in the to field. I'll hit continue. All right, there is a small Bitcoin charge on the Bitcoin network. Uh, that is the network fee on the Bitcoin blockchain. You'll notice Coinbase isn't charging us anything. We'll hit send now. And then uh, we'll confirm this. And now we need our two-factor authentication. I use Google Authenticator. I highly recommend that you enable two-factor authentication on your Coinbase account. It keeps it safe and secure. All right, so away the Bitcoin went. We can go over to uh, Ledger Live and wait for that Bitcoin to arrive. And we can hit the sync here. And it should uh, arrive in a minute or so. Uh, it could take up to 30 minutes, so be patient. While we're waiting on that, I'll go ahead and do the Ethereum. So I can go back over here to Accounts. I'll click on the Ethereum. I'll do a Receive. And once again, we need to confirm this on our device. I'll hit Continue here. And notice it's going to exit the Bitcoin app and then ask me to enter the Ethereum app, right? The Ethereum app is where the private keys for the Ethereum wallet are stored. So I need to access that app in order to confirm this receiving address, right? Uh, there it is. Uh, I can uh, navigate over with the metal button. I can see the address on my device and on my screen. I just want to eyeball it and make sure they match. I'll go ahead and copy that address into my clipboard. I'll advance over here to approve and hit both buttons. And once again, I'm done with the device. I don't need the device to remain connected in order to receive the Ethereum. We'll hit uh, done here. Let's go back over to Coinbase. We'll go to our portfolio and down to Ethereum. And then I'll do another send all. Now, if you're new at this and you've never done this before and you have a lot of Ethereum in your account, or Bitcoin or whatever, I highly advise you to start off with a small test transaction. Even the old hats do that. If you've ever heard of a big uh, Bitcoin transaction worth millions of dollars, they'll always tell you that they sent maybe a small amount first to test the wallet before they transferred that huge amount. You should do the same. Always make sure that you're able to send a small test transaction to your wallet before you send large amounts. It's just common sense. We'll hit continue here, right? Notice that there's charges on the Ethereum network here as well. Uh, Ethereum network charges are a little higher than Bitcoin charges right now. Uh, that's just something you should be aware of. We'll hit send now. And then uh, we'll go ahead and put in our two-factor code for Coinbase again. And off it goes. Now we'll hit done there. We can go back over to uh, Ledger Live. We can go to the portfolio and notice there that that Bitcoin has arrived, right? It's showing us that we have Bitcoin in our portfolio. We can go over to accounts and then click inside our Bitcoin wallet and we can see our current balance and we can see a uh, transaction history there. Uh, that's the first transaction that was incoming. Came from Coinbase into our wallet, right? This is all happening on the blockchain, right? We're monitoring a blockchain address on the Bitcoin blockchain, right? The Bitcoin is not in this wallet per se. It's in an address out there on the blockchain that I control, right? I can monitor the address with my Ledger Live software and I can manage it with my private key. Notice also that it says not confirmed here. That just means that it's confirming on the blockchain does not mean that you don't have it. It just means you can't spend it yet, that you can't send it to another wallet yet. That's a, a security feature on the Bitcoin blockchain. So just be patient. It will confirm. Might take a little while. All right Now let's go over to uh, the account interface. We can go into our Ethereum wallet. All right, and you can see here that the Ethereum has arrived in the wallet. All right. So uh, if we go to accounts, you'll see that we have two different types of wallets, right? Now, when they say account, it can also be thought of as a cryptocurrency wallet, right? A cryptocurrency wallet is simply a piece of software that allows you to manage cryptocurrency 
allows you to see your current balance, do uh, send and receive, and look at your transaction history. That's basically what a wallet is, what a wallet does. So when we look at accounts, just think of them as individual cryptocurrency wallets, right? So notice we have Bitcoin and Ethereum here, but I mentioned that we're gonna put some Chainlink in here. So Chainlink does not have a separate wallet because it's an ERC-20 token. It's an Ethereum-based token. So we'll store it in our Ethereum wallet. So we'll go ahead and open up the Ethereum wallet. And then notice down here it says Add Token. We can hit Add Token and then choose uh, Link. Notice it's near the top here. We'll click on that and then hit Continue. Notice it's going to do the same thing when we tried to send Ethereum into the wallet. It wants us to verify the address. It's going to show us the address there. Just make sure that the address you see on your screen and the address you see on your device match. We'll copy this into our clipboard. Uh, notice also that this is the exact same address as the Ethereum wallet. Right? It's the same address, but the wallet knows which token is which. Right, so once we send some link into this wallet, the Ethereum wallet will know where to, how to store the link. It'll store it separately. Right, we're done with our device at this point. Let's go back over to Coinbase. Let's go to our portfolio and we'll go down to Chainlink. And then uh, we're gonna do send all on the Chainlink. If you have a lot of Chainlink, like I said, do a small test transaction first. Make sure it's going to get to its destination. We'll hit continue here. Uh, we'll hit send now. Notice the network fee is, rel is pretty high. This is because the Ethereum blockchain fees are high right now. We'll hit send. And then we'll confirm. And then I need my two-factor authentication. I'll hit confirm here. And then the chain link has been sent. All right. When you hit done here, uh, and you're back in your uh, Chainlink portfolio, you can see the outgoing transaction here. And then you can confirm that it's on its way. All right? We'll go back over to Ledger Live, and we'll just wait for that Chainlink to arrive in our wallet. All right, so there you can see that the link has arrived in my wallet. And it's within the Ethereum wallet. So if we go back to accounts, you'll notice I still only have two wallets, right? But within the Ethereum wallet, I have a token called LINK. There are hundreds, literally thousands of ERC-20 tokens out there, and you can all store them inside an Ethereum wallet and manage them from within your Ethereum wallet. So if you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments, and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.